Hi everybody, this is Becca Heyman and you are watching First Line Frenzy Live. I am being joined by author and uh, you know soon to be guest host Merritt Weisenberg and we are gonna be looking at a dozen first lines today and talking about Merritt's latest book, This Golden State, which is amazing. Uh, I read it a few weeks ago and I haven't stopped thinking about it since. So we're gonna give everybody a few minutes to get here, give Merritt a few minutes to get here and then we'll get started. Um, I don't, I don't know if you can really, there's like a big glare behind me, but it's gorgeous. It's finally summer here in New England, mm. which for me is a mixed bag because I actually don't like the heat unless I'm at the beach. So like I enjoy observing the summer from a safe and temperature controlled environment, if that makes sense. Let me see if I can get Merit here. Do, do. Hmm. Nope, that's not it. Okay, well, we'll give it a few minutes and see. Um, so how's everybody? Or is, is anybody out there doing the um, my challenge, my my Roar Reading and Writing with Rebecca challenge? If you are and you wanna tell me about it, you can pop a note in the comments and I will certainly comment. I'm looking for Merit again, sorry everybody. <laughs> I don't know why she's not showing up in my invitations list. Maybe she's not on Instagram yet. We'll see. Um, Mary, if you are here and I just can't see you, just um, send a join request and I'll let you in right away. Uh, so, you know, how's everybody doing? I have been reading the most amazing book. I feel like an idiot because I left it upstairs and it's really pretty, but it's called All Our Hidden Gifts by um, Caroline O'Donohue. And it's wonderful. I talked about it in my newsletter last week and I'm enjoying it so much. It was. I, I started it on the recommendation of uh, a librarian friend who is rarely wrong and once again knocked it out of the park with this recommendation. It's like a dark sort of occult themed YA about this um, girl named Maeve who finds herself sort of preternaturally gifted when it comes to giving tarot card readings. And this seems to begin a chain of events that is really fascinating. And it takes place in Ireland. There's a lot, of, a lot going on during the story politically uh, and socially that makes the story just even more compelling um, on top of these incredible characters. So highly recommend that. Uh, it's me, Lauren says, I started my third act this week. Amazing job, congratulations. Uh, I, I hope you're gonna make it to our June 1st, or I hope you'll make it within our June 1st deadline. I know you'll make it to June 1st. Uh, I, I'm around, where am I? I'm like just inching towards 70,000 words, I feel really close to the end, but then I have sort of paused in my forward progress to backfill some things where I had left sort of bracketed notes to myself, like, hey, you need, a, you need to fill in X, Y, and Z here, and it was something I wasn't ready to think about at that moment, but I've been going back and filling in some of those scenes, which has actually been really great um, because it, it'll, it's clarifying a lot of what I need to make the third act sort of land the way I want it to. So, um, you know, I hope that all of you are enjoying that. I'm gonna check again and see if Merit is here. Let's see. We will still do this regardless, though I would be very sad to not have her with us. Nope, still not coming up. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll wait a few more minutes. Um, what else can I tell you? I'm finishing up an audiobook that I don't really like. It's called History of Wild Places. I really liked Shay Earnshaw's um, The Wicked Deep. I thought it was really fun and really great. And I remember when I read it thinking, oh, I would buy anything this author writes in the future. I, I per Perhaps my lack of enjoyment has been, oh, hi, Merit, you're here. Um, has the Part of the problem has been that she, that the, the narration on the audiobook is just really lackluster. So let's see. Okay, I can't multitask. Did it work? Merit, are you there? It says you joined, but I don't know yet because I can't see you. Can anyone else see Merit? And maybe it's just me that is having a glitch. Let us try again. Accept. Okay. John, thank you for the feedback. John always lets me know. Wait, what's going on? Okay. 
Hmm. I don't know why I'm struggling so much with this because who knows? Okay, good. Well, at least all of you can't see her yet because <laughs> what just mean? It's just me and that's like a level of disconnect I'm not ready for yet. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna keep trying. Uh-oh, it says Merit is unable to join. I just got an error message. I'm gonna try again. It's not you, it's Instagram. Thank you, John. Always with the affirmations. Oh, hi. Hi. Okay, it works. Sorry about that. Yes, that's okay. I, we're blaming Instagram. That's the thing to do now. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Everybody here? I mean, I'm fine. I can only speak for myself. Can you tell me so that I don't say it wrong? Do you Do you go by, is it Marit? It's Marit. Marit. Oh, see, that wouldn't have even been. <laughs> I know. It's really hard. It's not really hard, but it has many options. And so thank you for clarifying for me. And I, my apologies, because anyone who rewatches this on the replay is going to hear me say your name wrong for the first five minutes, but I won't do it no, again. I'm so used to it, I can't even tell you. <laughs> I'm sure you are. I, my last name is Heyman, and I, the number of people who say Hyman and then leave out the E, like we aren't talking about Hymans, is really, it's <laughs> awkward and strange. So like, at least it's not a part of the female genitalia you yes, know like true <laughs> you know like at least it's just like a nice long a that you're dealing with <sighs> i'm so happy to have you here thank, thank you so you much so for much agreeing to be here me. well i was like very obsessed with your book as soon as i read it so like oh, usually when that happens good. i start harassing you know people right away to come oh, I mean, there's nothing me. better. there's nothing better than yeah somebody liking your book seriously so well and i should tell you that of course i I read it because my friend, a librarian, actually, I was just talking about the same librarian. Christy always gives the best recommendation. She read your book and posted about it and was so effusive that I immediately got it. And then she also just recommended, um, or some time ago recommended, All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donohue. And I don't know if you've read that yet. No, it's also I a YA mystery. It leans toward the occult and it takes place in Ireland. But I was just talking about how I like, I really can't put it down. It's about this young girl named Maeve who discovers this sort of preternatural skill for reading tarot cards. And this triggers like a lot of strange things that start happening in her town. And I love it. There's a little bit of like a Fisher King vibe where the land is responding to like her emotions and oh, that's catnip for me. I have to read so, it. You know, um, it's really good, but your book, this golden state is so good. And so I'm, I'm curious So how, about how long were you writing that? And were you writing during the pandemic? Oh, yeah, I was. So I wrote it probably, there were some stops and starts. Um, probably, I wrote the first, um, I'd say, 100 pages um, in a couple months. And then I edited those like crazy because then I sold those to my publisher. Um, and so, but then they bought it, but, uh, oh, no, I had to just sit tight and go back and work on um, my edits on my other book. So the whole thing paused. And then December, I turned in my, my book. So it was, I wrote December to, I would say, end of April. So the pandemic happened, you know, wow. all of a sudden. So I was in the last, last, you know, lap, right when the pandemic hit. And I just remember waking up. So I went, I was sleeping in my daughter's room because my husband was still out working and we didn't, you know, nobody knew what was going on. And every morning I would wake up before anyone got up and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to end this book. Like I would just approach the keyboard so scared. I'd be like, <sighs> I just write. And like, I just, it was just like so slow of like, just mm. put, you know, in front of the other and I would work so like barely. And then I would just scroll the news. So, I mean, finishing that was, you know, that that was the hardest time to, you know, that was crazy. I can't imagine. I mean, that the, the mental focus it took to like scramble an egg was hard I to come by at that time. I and I can't imagine being at such a critical point. And, and thinking about that and then reflecting on my own reading experience, there's no lack of continuity. There's no feeling like the third act you know, drops out of the sky, it feels like everything slots into place so beautifully. And it's, it's just a testament, obviously, to how hard you must have worked uh, to, to get that right. But I can't I even think imagine I was how just, I think that was. I did it so, um, you know, the, the third act of the book is pretty short. 
And I think it was just like st step by step. I step in a lot of fear. <laughs> yeah. But so starting every... from a place of fear as one yeah. does, you know, no big yeah. deal at all. Yeah. Um, so I, we're about, it's about time to get started. And I, the First Line Frenzy is a community learning project, as I think I mentioned in one of my messages. So we're going to look at about a dozen First Lines. I realized today that in all of my other First Line Frenzy lives with authors, I've been saying a dozen lines, but actually posting 14 because math is not my strong suit, but I have an actual dozen for us to look at today. Okay. Um, and you should make a note of the number. Every line is numbered. So make a note of the number that you like best because okay. that author wins a copy nice. of this golden state, which I mean, okay. I think frankly, everybody watching should buy immediately, but here we are. Um, it just, so th did the hardcover come out at the beginning of May? Do I remember that? Or was it, it was April? March it March. Well, there we go. I read it like a few weeks after it came out, but now time has no meaning anymore. So I who know. knows when that was? Really yeah. Does. I was going to say, when do we get the paperback? But it won't be for a year, right? Right. Okay. So I have a variety of genres uh, queued up to go. I haven't really looked at any of these too carefully. And now we do the really high tech portion of the program where I just flip my camera to look at my computer because that's really all I can figure out. Is Prim back there? Oh, my fluffy cat just left. So, oh, well. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, that's a Mother's Day card from my son. Oh. Should have moved that. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pull this forward. Wah! Can you see it okay? I can see it perfect. Great. I'm like, I can always see it fine, but I'm just like, maybe there's some disconnect. Okay, so line number 152 is an adult romance, and it reads, Lorian opened his eyes as soon as the footsteps of his captors faded away. So my first thought is, I worry that this is too waking up adjacent. I, waking up in a first line is anathema to my entire existence. Uh, so I worry that this person has been faking sleep and sort of waiting for the right moment to open their eyes. And if that is indeed the case, I would prefer not that. Uh, yeah, I, my, what I would do with it is um my if it were mine i would probably separate it um and listen to the you know first hear the footsteps of the captors fade away and then open eyes just to be so super clear you know yeah. and then maybe mention like faking sleep but it's true that there are two senses here like the right hearing and and seeing are kind of being mushed together which is not terribly effective well, um, I think I always used to do that. And now um, I I think I've been beaten down that go for just clarity first, even if it seems too simple. Yes, clarity first and clarity always. The, in, if there were rules to first line frenzy, and there really are not, uh, clarity first and always would definitely be number one. And then no waking up in a first line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on. Oh, my goodness. Okay, hold on. I have to adjust. Oh, wow. Usually when they're this long, it's either fantasy or, uh, or literary. But here we are with supposedly adult fantasy. general. Well, it's commercial, though I, I do get a fantasy vibe here. Um, Alfredo raced down the slope, his laurel jam tight on his head and held in place by one hand, ducking and weaving through the crowd, hoping his friends had saved him a place in the best vantage spot on the arena, ensuring a premium view of his hero, Gabriel, the archangel, the archangel. Well, should be Archangel. Uh, this is a lot. This is a lot, a lot. It's a lot of really good detail. I think, again, I, I think it, it would be, I would separate it out. I would. Yes. Well, there's, you know, I would, there's so much to separate. And then there's a lot of maybe too much detail. So I feel like uh, here, for example, you know, holding his laurel in place with one hand is just as effective. If it's jammed really tight on his head, he shouldn't have to hold it in place. So I feel like some of the details go like a, maybe a step too far. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly don't think this is a critical, like, or maybe this is important because he wants to get this premium view. But Archangel, I mean, if this is supposed to be Archangel, it should be one word. Um, and we don't need a comma here. So yeah, it seems like too much for me. It's a little, it's a little busy for my taste. 
Yeah, I think it's busy. Um, I love, I, I mean, visually, I, I can see it. And I think some yes. details can maybe be saved for a bit later. Yeah, it, well, uh, what I have to consider is if the entire manuscript is this dense, I will have input fatigue at the end of chapter one. Yeah, yep. yep. You know, I would just be exhausted by the end of chapter one. So I think it, it's great to see all of this so clearly, but I think also that we can only really look at one thing at a time. Totally, it's dense. Very dense. Okay, so look, we're going at such a quick clip. My God, maybe I do need 14 lines. Uh, <laughs> number 154, an adult fantasy. On a particularly balmy afternoon in the office, one of Beelzebub's repugnant little messenger flies buzzed its way over to whisper a quiet word in my ear. I am weirdly charmed by this. I'm bumped a little bit by the balmy afternoon in the office just because I'm thinking that's outside. Um, yes. That's true. I don't know how it could be both. Uh, yeah, very good. I, 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 I think it's got to be, unless the, I mean, it could be balmy inside the office, but balmy does seem like a, a real outdoorsy word. Um, I'm trying to think, okay, on a particularly balmy afternoon, let's just take out office for a second. One of Beelzebub's repugnant little messenger flies buzzed its way over to whisper a quiet word in my ear. Yeah, like I think if you took out office or if you just, um, you know, change balmy. Yeah, I would change balmy. I kind of am, I'm intrigued by the idea of like a, a sort of corporate underworld. Yeah, maybe. exactly. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I, I could really be into that. Yeah. Uh, but I do think, though, okay, challenge. If the office is in hell and it's hot all the time and it's a little steamy, then maybe it is balmy inside. But even then, I, I think there's, there's got to be a more indoorsy word for this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. A bit stuffy doesn't quite do it for a first line of a book. Agreed. A hundred percent. Yeah. Stuffy is not going to do it. Um, but I, yeah, I, so far I, I quite like that one. Let's see. Uh, YA contemporary. Let me make sure I'm centered here. Uh, I stood on the curb, secured the pins on my head covering, and tightened the laces of my Reeboks. It was my first day of school. My friends, we do not use apostrophes to create plural forms. Um, and I feel like head covering maybe needs to be hyphenated here. Though I would be more interested, ooh, sorry, in a specific kind of head covering, right? Like I would love to know the nature of the head covering, whether it's a hat or mm -hmm. a wrap or a scarf, or, you know, is it a religious covering? Is it, you know, I don't know. So I would really be interested. I think we could get a little bit more character on the page by refining and defining this. And it might be an interesting contrast to Reeboks as well. Uh, that's what I like, the contrast. Um, yeah. Because I'm picturing it as a religious covering, but, you know, that's my guess. Um, so, yeah, that needs to be clarified. Um, I don't know if we need pins. I don't know. What do you think? And secured my head covering. Um, I don't know. It, like, I feel like the pins are probably already secure. If it's like a nervous adjustment, then maybe it's the word secured. Like maybe it's checking the pins. Like if it's a, if it is a covering and if it's, and if the purpose is modesty, um, then, you know, if this is, let's say a young Orthodox Jewish girl going to school for the first time in a shaitel in a, in a full wig to cover her hair, um, then, you know, that is like a different, those pins are hidden. So I just feel like the, the idea of securing them is different from checking to make sure they're secured. Uh, so I, again, I think defining the nature of the head covering is important here. And then that might modify whatever um, apparatus is being used to keep it in place. Uh, but I, again, I think the, the, the contrast between this very conservative, covering and the specific mention of Rebox is really intriguing for me. Yeah, it's really gives a lot of good information in one sentence. You know, it places you.
Yeah. Though I, I, the M dash and it was my first day of school. It feels like kind of an add on. Would you do I mean, period? Would you do period? It was my first day of school. Yeah, I mean, I just think it was, you know, the first day of my junior year or whatever it is, is going to be the beginning of another idea. Mm -hmm. um, I, you could even, we could even go, I stood on the curb outside, you know, name of specific school, right? I stood up, oh, yeah. I stood on the curb outside Council Rock High School North, my, unfortunately, my alma mater. Um, I like and, that. Start with, yeah. start with the high school. Um, yeah. Or, or, or school. Right, exactly. Or a junior high or whatever it is. I stood on the curb of outside of specific place and did this specific action. I just feel like head covering is quite vague and first day of school feels almost middle grade to me rather than um, YA. So mm -hmm. I, I would probably, uh, I would probably just want, I want more specificity all over, but I'm so interested. So that's, it ticks at least one box, right? Because we right. want to know what's going on. Let's see. Do, do, do. An adult thriller. Okay. It was now or never. Checking over his shoulder one last time, William hit the send button, hoping his contact would see the warning in time. Well, we have a comma slice, which is not great. Um, this, it was now or never as a cliche. And so for that reason alone, it doesn't deserve to be here. But more than that, it, that's a complete sentence. That's your first line, which is a total waste of prime real estate. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would nix that completely and start with checking over his shoulder one last time. But then we have a repetition on time. Look at that. One last time, yeah. warning yeah. in time, tick, tick, tock. Um, would you, could you take out checked over his shoulder? Would you just take out that first one last time? Checking over his shoulder. William hit the send button, hoping yes. his contact would see the warning. Um, I might just take away all of that. William hit the send button, hoping his contact would see the warning in time. You know, it's so funny how the one thing I've learned is just how sometimes brevity is just like you think it's going to be too simple, and it it's not. It works. No, nope. it really works because there's just so when you cut to the heart of what of what it is, it's a simple action for a good reason. Mm -hmm. And just saying that is quite enough. Um, I certainly, yeah, I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't press on with a lot of this throat clearing at the beginning of the sentence. Um, <laughs> I like the way you said that. It's true. You know, I, I stole it from somebody else, but I will take all the credit. Uh, <laughs> it's not, yeah, I think and generally, I mean, I would just love to see more of William on the page. Um, hoping feels like a big nothing burger of a verb, right? I mean, it's very like, it's almost very passive for someone doing this very active thing, you know, trying to send a warning and then just, you know, well, hope it gets there in time. Onward. <laughs> it feels um, you know, yeah, I don't think praying is the, you know, right. No. But um... it might be worth moving things around um maybe you should be oh maybe you should have sent it with a red receipt right maybe this isn't the moment maybe this is the moment before the moment when it starts maybe he's waiting to see if it was red not waiting like because hitting a button is a one-time thing it's done um but maybe we join maybe we join william actually a minute or two after this moment um you know, when the person he's hoping doesn't spot him, you know, walks up to his desk. Uh, yeah, I think this could be the right, the right scene, the wrong moment. Uh, certainly we need a little Yeah, right mess. scene and maybe, yeah, I like the idea of starting just a second after that, you know. Yeah. Now it's time to go. Yeah, he's got to, he's got to go. Uh, let's see, the next one is a YA mystery. I think I have back, do I have back to back YA mystery? Let me see. Nope. Um, why a mystery? I found that this Golden State ticks so many boxes in terms of genre, right? Like oh, it's a mystery and it's a romance and it's contemporary and it's a coming of age and it's so many things. I know I can't stop myself, right? It's just yeah, there's <laughs> a lot, a lot in. But that. it, but it doesn't feel busy. Like it's sort of the, because so much of Poppy's existence has been based on on the mystery at the heart of her family that for her to come into her own self is 
she has to solve the mystery in order to gain that knowledge. And so it feels, it never feels busy. It just, when you start talking about the book, you're like, well, it's this, but it's also this. And it's also a little bit of that and some of this. It's like, a, it's a, it's a beautiful, big hot fudge sundae of a, of a novel. Oh, you said, um, I, I like the way you said it. It makes it sound, um, yes. It's, I like thinking of it as organic instead of me putting genres together. But yeah. No, you would never yeah. do that. Her finding, no, her, a, yes. the mystery is related to finding out who she really is. So yeah, it is. A, yeah, I, there is no coming of age for her if there is not a resolution of this, like, the, the mystery is this big gaping wound. It's like she's walking around bleeding and doesn't even know it. And so, you know, for her to sort of stitch herself back together is such a big part of what happens. But all of this is to say, I tried to look through my list of, of lines and get as many YA mysteries as I could in here, but I'm like, out. Oh, this is like the last one uh, in my list of like 500 lines. So I need more YA mystery writers to get on that first line frenzy train. Okay. I spent my Sunday mornings waiting outside the morgue with two non-fat lattes. This comma is unnecessary, and so we shall remove it. Um, it's kind I of a fact cake. Sorry, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, the people are here for you, but I was just saying it's a bit of a fact cake, which is our first line frenzy shorthand for information without character or conflict. Um, it's interesting information. I would love to know why this person is just hanging out, you know, outside the morgue. But uh, there is not that in it that is interesting enough, but it's not quite, it doesn't make me super compelled to find out what's going on. I actually really like it. I, um, at first I read it as I spent my Sunday morning waiting out, and then I was like, no, I spent my Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, wait, I want to know. You know, and who's this other person? I mean, it definitely made me want to keep going and figure out what the deal is. So that's good. I, I'm, I'm, look, I want to know why, for sure. Mm -hmm. I guess I wish there were just a little bit more. I, maybe what I'm responding to is a, is a general dislike for opening lines that start with pointed inaction, right? I spend my Sunday mornings waiting. So it's not it's, there's no, there's no action or movement. It's we're at a complete standstill from the, from the word go. That's a good And one. I, I almost wonder, I mean, it's a totally interesting scenario. Don't get me wrong, but I, I almost wish, um, maybe whereas in that previous line, we need to start a few minutes later. Maybe this one is a couple seconds earlier. Like, sh like this, maybe this person spots the, like, spots the same dog they always see or like maybe to show us that it's a ritual or a familiar um you know repeated meeting I wonder if showing us instead of telling us would be a little more dynamic it would be yeah you know like I watched the same cocker spaniel lift his leg on the side of the on the brick side of the morgue every Sunday and it you know it, I don't know, something about like the jog pee. And, yeah, no, that's like, the smell of a latte. Genius. No, that's the... <laughs> I feel like maybe that, maybe that's the way to do it by showing us. And I think the familiarity with something mundane, like a jogger or a dog or something, um, might, or even like a delivery truck, you know, um, could be maybe a little, just a little bit more intriguing and, and give us a little action for our protagonist to, Again, I want to know what the heck they're doing there. Um, also, live your life. If you're really, if you're a young adult, just get the full fat latte. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just be all in on your full fat latte. Okay, uh, moving on to an adult historical. I saw from the porthole in the cabin Violet and I shared a postcard perfect golden shore bathed in the morning sunlight with hills in the distance. We are in desperate need of punctuation here. Let's figure out where it goes. I saw from the porthole in the cabin, Violet and I shared. Oh, so it's this, this is a little awkward. We can't really put a comma there, but it's quite, um, it's very gummy when I tried to say it. Huh. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to figure out if we start from the porthole in the cabin. Um, I, saw I mean, 
from a macro view, it's all description and absolutely nothing else. I mean, if we've arrived somewhere, we've been dreaming, I want to know that if, I don't know, there's so there's a lot more, there are more interesting things about two people sharing a, a cabin on a ship than a picture perfect shore in the more, I mean, I'm just, that's not especially moving to me. I, I, I mean, it's, I think it accomplishes one thing. And so, I mean, I think the uh, Violet and I sharing is a second thing, but nothing happens with that. We don't know, mm -hmm. you know, not enough information or it comes too early. You're right. I mean, I like the, you know, it gets me excited for what kind of, you know, I can see, I can picture this. But yeah. That's all I'm getting. It's a beautiful description, but it's certainly not, it, it, you know, first line real estate has to be for something more dynamic than, than a place where we were not, right? Like she's, again, this is another, maybe even another instance of opening in a moment of inaction because mm -hmm. she's not stepping off the ship, right? Onto this golden shore. She's just looking at it. And again, it's like, well, okay. Maybe she you could know. be elbowing Violet aside or, you know, they're elbowing <laughs> each other. Yes. Uh, you know, or like maybe like seeing, yeah, something about have they arrived somewhere? Like I just, are they pirates? I just want to know. <laughs> you know. There's, um, there's probably more interesting things in this cabin than the view outside. And if there's not, I want to know about that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe again, right moment or like right, right time to open, but the wrong, you, you have us looking in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. um, let's see where oh a middle grade fantasy once upon a time I got off the ground rubbing the back of my head and wondered how a girl who was so small could seem so powerful to everyone except herself a wild ride right didn't <laughs> I'm trying to take out once upon a time um I will help here. Let's look at it this way. Got off the ground is a weird way to say stood, huh? I, um, I got up, um, yeah, got from the ground. I got up because I'm picturing, you know, somebody just, I'm picturing asphalt being pushed. So I'm, kind of yes. seeing ground, but um... yeah, there's something uh, I'm intrigued by the idea that this is that this person thinks of herself in the third person. Like that is where my interest is most potent. This mm -hmm. idea how a girl was so who is so small could seem so powerful to everyone except herself. And is that power not a contrast to someone getting off the ground who it seems that they've been injured somehow? Yeah, that's true. Um, so I, I just don't, point. yeah, yeah I don't so totally small, understand what's going on. Could seem so, it's almost like she could seem uh, so powerful to herself and not everyone else. You know? Yeah. It, it, yes. You know, it does seem like maybe this is a mistake. Right. <laughs> but right. I got up off the ground, rubbing the back of my head, and wondered how a girl so small could seem so powerful to herself and not everyone else or nothing. Yeah. Wondered how I could feel so powerful. Yeah. Something. I, I'm. I'm just. I wonder also if the switch to third person might just be a narrative wrinkle that is, that isn't serving a purpose. I, I think um, the once upon a time, if we consider that back in, um, it, that is the fairy tale language. Once upon a time, once upon a time, uh, a girl so small, you know, a small girl, everyone thought a very small girl was so powerful, but she didn't believe it, right? That's the fairy tale language. Mm -hmm. But then we're trying to like also insert this first person narrative that requires action that is also a little bit belabored. There's a lot happening. I and 
Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I, I, I just, I'm not quite sure where I'm supposed to look. I like the idea of doing the fairy tale language once upon a time. And then, you know, there was a girl who blah, blah, blah. How could she seem so powerful, you know, and then yeah. start with the I, you know, then. Yeah. Maybe just let that first sentence be the fairy tale language and be that sort of distant, you know, because when you invoke something like once upon a time, you're, you're asking your readers to, you're, you're just triggering so many narrative implications that your readers are going to connect, yeah. you know? And so there, it, you can't then overcomplicate things because they're already, they already have a lot going on. Um, so I think maybe this is just a touch too much in, in a few too many places. I, yeah, I think the answer is probably that this is its own sentence. I think so. Somewhere, you know? I, yeah, um, I would like that next even. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. The contrast between like something sort of fantastical, a once upon a time statement and getting up off the ground. Yeah. And then like, boom, reality. Yeah, exactly. Like, and uh, yeah. And is, is this person thinking of the fantasy and then living the reality? And is the tension between those two things interesting to, as interesting to her as it would be to us? Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of an int uh, a good question. <laughs> we're, all, we're solving all kinds of problems today. Okay. Number 160, adult sci-fi, locked in a room under a mile of crushing earth, unable to ping for help. All I had was my voice. Hmm. I might take out the unable to ping for help. Hmm. Why? Because I think it's implied. You know, if you're locked under a mile of earth, you know, I think it's pretty much, we know you're isolated. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's to uh, solidify the sci-fi-ness of it. True. But it's like people have I, uh, sensibly purchased a book with a cover and they have read the blurb and they know what to anticipate. So the idea, yeah, I mean, locked, having a room a mile under, uh, under the earth is already kind of not part of the everyday. Yeah, we might not need the pinging. Yeah, and put, maybe also it's like my device, you know, specialized device name, uh, had lost contact with the satellites, et cetera, et cetera. That's like a sentence two or three situation, sort of modifying that initial conflict. Mm-hmm. And that this, yeah, this is going to be about, and I think when you say all I had was my voice, it's like, you know, like there's no entertainment. You're just, you know, you're in jail here. It's just. Yeah. Though maybe it's, I wonder if it's the pinging for, it's the, it's the crying for help issue. Right. Oh, right, right. Um, um, miles crushing earth. Um, all I had was my voice to cry for help. It would kind of be more interesting if it was like uh, the only uh, with only my voice to call for help. But then like I'm kind of envisioning this person <clears throat> revealing something like and I haven't spoken a word for in a decade, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and like I would it's just so much more interesting if there's something um, if there's if there's a twist. I don't know. Because again, not to belabor the point, right? we have a theme today, which is we're opening on a time of desire to action, but inaction, right? Mm -hmm. It basically says I'm trapped and there's nothing I can do but scream, which is like not terribly, I don't know. I guess the question is how will this person get out of it, of course, but and it's funny, I mean, you know, every, we're reacting always to what we're reading, and some readers don't want to read a book where they feel stuck. So if you even insert a little bit of action in here, it, that's yeah. a book off on a totally different foot, even if it's, you know, yeah. word of just not having the reader feel so desolate, um, even if A hundred percent. Like, I, I think about the experience of reading, like, The Martian, and I never felt alone reading it, even though you're reading about this person who's totally isolated, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
or there's, I don't know if you read um, Anthony Doerr's latest. Uh, That's so funny. Land. For whatever reason, I knew you were about to say um, <laughs> Anthony Doerr. That's so crazy. <laughs> I was just, for whatever reason, I was thinking about All the Light You Cannot See, and I don't know. That's why. really funny. Yeah. No, I, I, have it on, I have it on Audible, but I haven't listened yet. Oh, the, oh my gosh. Marin Ireland does the audio for that. And it's so good. It's outstanding. Oh, awesome. Um, it does. But one of the, it, it's like five different, it's actually six, uh, six different stories, just six different timelines sort of interwoven together. And one of, in one of them, someone is very isolated in space. And that's not a spoiler, I promise. And, and still I think of reading that and I think about experiencing that that isolation but never feeling depressed about it even though it's not a great situation you know whereas I, I think it's because there's a sense when you're reading that although the doors are closed we can throw open a window and this doesn't give me that um so yeah. I would love I would almost love like after after calling after an hour of calling for help, my voice is raw, and I decide the only way to escape the locked room a mile uh, under a mile of crushing earth is, and then tell me what you're going to do next. Mm -hmm. I start to dig, you know. That's a totally different feeling, even though completely different setup. Yeah, uh, and I think certainly just one that invites a reader into an experience as opposed to maybe an experience you like don't want to experience. <laughs> Right, being like, eh, I'm just going to take a walk and get some sunshine and try to forget that you're trapped. Okay, YA romance. Again, one of the genres involved in, in this golden state. Uh, so he is certain he's doing the right thing, freeing her. Niklaus can't help but wonder what Vaya will do. I'm totally guessing that Vaya is how we say that name. Vaya? Vea? Uh, you probably Vea. I don't know. Because like Faye would be F-A-E, so maybe Vea? Vea. All right, Vea. Well, that's your first roadblock, friends. Um, I want to take out the end of it. Um, I, you know what I think would be just kind of woohoo a really interesting and easy fix would be something like yeah right yeah i like it i i have said before that anytime someone says I can't help but wonder. I think of Carrie Bradshaw clacking away on her like colorful <laughs> iMac in, you know, 2004. And so I just think this is such, this in itself is such a cliche. Can't help but wonder. Mm -hmm. It's, we all do it. it. We're all guilty. I truly, everyone. But it's such a big nothing burger of a phrase. You, you just can't help but wonder. I mean, it's just... I see it everywhere. It's like the breath you didn't know you were holding. We, we've, we've sort of uploaded these phrases into our narrative consciousness and we need to delete them. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I mean, I'm really interested in, in, the, the, in whether it is the right thing, right? And like what that means. Everything else is kind I of too. everything else. And he's yeah. it's an action, he's freeing her. Um, yeah. And yeah, and who is she? I like it. And like, what, where is she imprisoned and why? And is he her jailer? Or is like, what is the situation? I mean, I, it passes what we call the so what, what's next test. Um, oh, I like that. I need to think about that. <laughs> I think about it all the time. I sometimes think about it sentence by sentence, but I always think about it when I'm looking at a first line. Like, do, is it just a total so what? Or am I really on the hook for what comes next? Um, yeah, I gotta say, I think the edit's better than the original. Well, there I go, shooting my own, my own horn. I know, no, I love the edit. <laughs> All right, well, there you go, author. We've done it, we fixed it for you. Okay. Uh, is this the last one? No. It's the second to last one, the penultimate one. Uh, the year before the accident, we waited like feeder cattle, 
herded into a crowded pen, watchful and wary. Mm -hmm. I like it. I'm struggling with the year before the accident. Um, like it's two well, different. It's two different things. Yeah. I think what I'm, what I like about it is that it's the year before the accident we waited and it implies that what they were waiting for was the impact. Whatever the accident is, you know, whether it's a meltdown of a nuclear reactor or, you know, uh, like someone finally taking oh. the hairpin turn too fast, you know, like I feel I'm sort of intrigued by the idea that a community, a herd of people would be, is just waiting for something terrible to happen. Okay. I'm that, reading it differently now. It took me a second to understand. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe I'm misreading it, but that maybe I'm just going too dark, we waited. but I, so there, so I guess it's might not be, maybe it's just me, but it might not be intuitive that they all uh, know this accident's going to happen. Look, grammatically, I think that's what it means, but it could be, to it could be, that could be me just extrapolating something that's not there. But that's what I like about it. The, if that is the case, I really, it, it has Ethan Frome vibes for me. Um, I don't know if you've read, Ali Benjamin came out with a, an Ethan Frome retelling called The Smash Up, I think last year, was it 2020 or 2021? Again, I'm really bad with time now. Um, <laughs> Post-COVID world, time just doesn't mean anything to me. Post-pandemic world. Um, but she writes, uh, she wrote this great Ethan from retelling called The Smash Up. And it takes place in this, like, bougie New England town. And it focuses on this, like, <laughs> sort of, like, hilariously liberal school and this family. Oh, it's, where this. it's so good. It's, um, it's like, uh, the... Figuring out if you, I loved Ethan Frome, the original. And so sort of seeing how that was transposed into a modern context was totally fascinating. But beyond that, there, in, in what was so great about Ali, Benjamin, Ali Benjamin's book is that it captures the sense of foreboding that the original Ethan Frome managed to just blanket over the entire book, even in its moments of, like romance and it's and hope there's just a sense that something absolutely terrible is coming and uh and that is kind of what I feel here and I am weirdly into it <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of yeah I'm kind of getting these sort of hunger games feel to oh, not yeah. just in the dread you know of people yeah they have to show up for this thing you know yes and like they're, they're the they're theater happy. cattle that yeah. theater cattle is like so specific. Um, and I just, I find this very intriguing. So this gets, I like this one a lot. And I don't know if it, if it is a, you know, it's just me that it took a second and maybe, you know, it's okay to have to kind of work through it for a second. I don't know. But I, I mean, I think it is. I think also part of it is that like, there's, there's something unsavory about people as herded animals or like there's something that I I it's the dread I think that you're responding to right it's that like oh I don't I don't think I want to know you know but I think it's very effective at the same time because I felt like when I read it I you know the year before the accident like they don't know that you know somebody in their family is going to die yet like I felt mm. like a car accident and then mm -hmm. it took me to like, right now, we waited like feeder cattle in a crowded pen, watch one wary for something else. So I was like, that's, that was what oh, for, my yeah. brain went. Through. That could be true. I mean, I, I could be giving this sentence way more credit than it deserves. That is entirely possible. But um, I like your, your interpretation of it really makes me, if that's the correct one, like I really like it. And it's like, note to author, if I'm, if I'm wrong, make me right. <laughs> you know, like, don't let me be wrong about this because it's too good um all right let's let's take a peek at the last one. Oh, i see hyphenation that's always a trip okay 
Chief Inquisitor Riley King killed the engine of his car and sighed as he picked up the bouquet of vervain flowers, briar shrubs, and a handful of sorry I'm late for Christmas Eve dinner, Mom. Why would shrubs be in a bouquet? Maybe I don't know what briar shrubs are. Maybe yeah, maybe I don't know what they are either because I'm thinking they're just shrubs. And I kind of, well, you know, I'm trying to figure out if I like a handful of, sorry, I'm late for dinner or eat for Christmas Eve. Dinner. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out if I like that. Um, yeah. I think the contrast between this title, right, Chief Inquisitor Riley King and a son sort of doing his penance or like a son coming to his mother kind of a, a, with an apology is such a contrast to this, you know, this powerful title. And normally, you know, when we see an adult mystery and it starts with a title, it's because we're meeting the person who's supposed to solve whatever crime is going to happen. Um, but I like that immediately some of that person's power is taken away. Mm -hmm. I might take out one of the words in a handful of sorry, I'm late for Christmas Eve dinner, mom. Like it's a lot. Like maybe I'm, you know, um, a handful of sorry, I'm, I'm late for Christmas dinner, mom, you know, just even more or less. You know, I, I actually think that I would, so here's, I'm going to take this way too far because that's my job. <laughs> it's Christmas Eve and you're late for dinner, which means there is not a florist open in anywhere, right? Florists are closed. So I, the, like the possibility of finding like a bouquet of such specific flowers, obviously, sorry, I'm late for Christmas Eve dinner, mom, is not a flower, but it's the implication is that it's like, a, a bouquet that has been made to say I'm sorry. Like it would be a convenience store. store. Right. I'm thinking this is like half dead carnations from a 7-Eleven. Yeah. And like, I'm way more interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That would be on I'm, brand. That would be on brand. I'm thinking of, with uh, Chief Inquisitor Riley King. Yeah. I, I kind of agree. I just think the, the possibility of having like a bouquet like this is, is really unlikely. Not if it's Christmassy. Yeah. I just, everything closes early Christmas Eve, you know, except for Chinese food. That's because what else are, what, what, am, what are my people supposed to eat? Um, so like, that's all there is. Uh, so John says they sound like items he picked up along the way to me, but John, if it's Christmas, like, Oh, Oh, so maybe he like, pick someone shrubs yeah, because from his his yard um <laughs> like prior shrubs from the yard <laughs> i mean that is also really funny and again really on brand but i we have to we, we have to be told that right yeah yeah so i love the you know for a different um guy different time i love the you know beautiful description of the flowers but yeah i don't I don't think it would be the case. Yeah, it doesn't feel like I'm coming back, so don't be alarmed when my giant face is suddenly on the screen. Um, it doesn't feel very possible that like this is the moment, right, for these things to um, to be here. Like I just don't. Yeah, if, if it's stuff that they've like pulled out of people's yards, I think that's funny and great, but probably also needs to be articulated very clearly. Otherwise, it just seems like a bit. A, a little bit much. Okay. It just makes me laugh because I mean, I've been known as a, you know, to desperately try and find a flower to pick from the yard or from somewhere in the neighborhoods for the bring a bloom for your teacher to add to the vase. And I've been like, ah, whoops. We Is that a thing? I didn't know that that was a thing. Oh yeah. That was, oh. a, that was a thing for teacher appreciation. Yeah. And I'd always, you know, Forget. That feels stressful. I like to just Venmo whoever is collecting money for the Amazon gift no, card. I mean, yeah, I think they want lunch instead of Motley yard flowers picked at the last minute. A hundred percent. Yes. No one needs a Motley yard flower. I agree. A yard flower bouquet. Though, like saying something like a, a yard flower bouquet that was mostly briar shrubs 
would be really funny in that sentence yeah, and yeah. really valid. Yeah. Um, okay. Did you happen to, to note a favorite? Well, okay. So we had 12. We had 12. Okay. If you tell me like what phrase or, or what you it remember. Was, about you know, it. like I thought about it and it was really between um, three, the Beelzebub one and mm -hmm. 11, which was mm -hmm. the, the feeder cattle. The feeder and, cattle. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to go with the feeder cattle um, because it, like, it's under my skin. Yeah. You know? It sticks with you. Yeah. yeah. It totally sticks with uh, Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I don't know who wrote it. I'm, I'll get it. I'll check my list and I'll, they leave their email addresses. So I will email the author of number 162 and you will be receiving a copy of uh this golden state which i hope you will enjoy because i certainly enjoyed it uh so what are you reading now can i ask i am reading oh i have a stack of books i um one of my really really good friends just came out with a book yesterday um may cobb who wrote the hunting wives so she just her book my summer Dar darlings um a real like um you know bad girls in East Texas, like it's uh, middle-aged women and the stranger comes to town. So a real like beach read with um, about female friendship and um, you know, I kind of, uh, I love, we talked about it last night. She talked about it last night, like unlikable, but interesting characters. Yeah. So I am psyched for that. Um, I also have Hanya Yanagira's next book that um i haven't dug into yet who you know she wrote a little life so mm -hmm. this is her next one um i'm yeah. secretly terrified to read a little life i have it i've had it for like oh man myself. i have never gone through a night read a 900 page book in a week and i did and i'm still traumatized from it and that's why everyone's so traumatized by it. yes am i ready Can, do I, I i i know i need to do it i want to do it but i just like I need to brace myself emotionally for it. And I never know yeah. what the right time yeah. to be. And like, I think I was in a bit of a better state to read that before the pandemic. <laughs> you know, yeah. now it's like, I, I find a lot that I want to read, um, like fun, beachy, at least at the moment, you know? Yeah. Oh, and I just, I did just read something that was um, hard and beautiful. And that was uh, The Five Wounds. Um, and I highly recommend it. So, sounds like you need to like go toward the beach read direction to like yeah, lighten yeah. up, right? It's you like know, end of May or it's you know mid May Memorial Weekend's coming up. Like now, I'm in the mood to um, read some sunny fast books. Yes, sunny and fast. What I just, I was just in Barnes and Noble. I was shopping for picture books for my little niece. I got her a bunch of um, unicorn themed books because I made her this Aww. tiny unicorn. Oh, and oh, I'm impressed that you can make that. That's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. But it's so, I love it's booping its nose. And so I wanted to get her a bunch of unicorn books. And so then, of course, like, in for a penny, I had to just buy a bunch of stuff for myself. I got um, Holly Black just wrote, or, or just came out with her first book for adults. Um, and it looks very menacing, which I'm excited about. And I got The Agathas. Oh, I can't remember. I think you're the second person who told me about that. And I don't know what it is, but I've just heard about this. And I can't remember. Let me see. I just, I hate not knowing an author. Uh, Kathleen Glasgow and Liz Lawson. Right. I was obsessed and still love The Guinevere's by Sarah Domet. And so anytime I see like a book title that's like the women's names, I'm like, yes, I'm in. You know, I loved The Ballerinas by... Um, uh, Rachel Kap Kapelke Dale. I'm probably butchering her name, um, and I have her next one, the arc of her next one that I can't that I can't wait to read, uh, called like the Ingenue. Again, I just like yeah. Give me a, a noun and an article, and I'm in. Oh, good! I love that. <laughs> you know? um, the, all our hidden gifts. Reading that. What else do I have? I have a ton of just something. Like such a massive stack of books. Ooh, I want to read Beasts of a Little Land this month. Have you read that one? No, no, but I'm writing it down. I've heard only the best things about it. But again, I just like, I bought it. I have the beautiful hardcover and I just haven't gotten there. But I'm taking vacation this weekend with my mom and my sister. And so I will have all these, 
I've like convinced myself that it, within a four day vacation, I will have seven days to read novels. Which, you know, you'll like, have more time than perhaps you, you know, have when you're in your own home, which I find <laughs> like, you know, it's hard to just sit and not get distracted by the phone or the, yeah. Yeah. So I have high hopes for your vacation reading. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, we're going to Disney World, so I'm definitely going to be spazzing out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Child, you will be like, whatever. <laughs> totally going to. Totally going to. You know, maybe I can do, like, an audiobook in one AirPod and then just, like, go through my day. I might be able to, like, really, like, cut through some of the TBR. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank with you us so today. much for You're amazing. Me. This was so much fun. I loved it. Thank you for asking. Well, come back. Right, more. I will. Posts, and then will. come back. I hope you will. And I'm um, so impressed by your editing skills, I just have to say. Thank you. Um, that is very kind. I, uh, you know, I've been at it for too long, maybe. <laughs> for a long time. It, you know how it is. It's very easy to look at someone else's stuff and be like, I can, of course, solve all your problems. And then, you know, for my own stuff, I'm like, the No, but as thing. like, yeah, I'm always like, please solve my problems. You know, when I try <laughs> to rewrite that, that one line, I'm like, oh my gosh, that person just got the best gift ever. Yeah. Well, we try to, we try to give the gifts, you know, it's well cause they, they volunteer their, their lines, you know, like I obviously first line frenzy wouldn't exist without all of the nice people who submit yeah. their stuff and, and it's hard give to us something to look at. It's hard to be vulnerable, you know? So it's yes. great to, yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for being here. And again, you're welcome back anytime and everybody go out and buy this golden state. I, uh, I listened to it and the audio is spectacular. I'm a total audiobook snob. And I really loved the audio. It's really, really well done. So um, it's beautiful. The cover is gorgeous. Uh, definitely one to own for the collection. And I hope you have an amazing summer. Get on some beach reads to lighten the mood. And, and we'll, we'll be watching for what's next. Yay. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye.